Great outfit, man. <laughs> I, I got to start there. On a serious note, let's get back to the note. Um, you're seeing a lot of, of upside for tech in Q4. You actually believe that tech can move another 10% in Q4. What's the catalyst? I mean, look, this is our second trip in Asia in the last six weeks. Demands outstripping supply 15 to 1. So even though right now it starts with Godfather of AI, Jensen, NVIDIA, this second, third, fourth derivative, it's just starting to play out in terms of AI. I think that is going to be the catalyst to tech stocks being up 10% plus this year, 20% next year. I think the AI party, still 9 p.m. with the party that doesn't <laughs> end till 4 a.m. Why does the party end at 4 a.m.? I, I mean, I don't even, I, this metaphor always cracks me up every time you do it. Uh, but on a serious note, you're saying demand is up. That's what's going to push the tech sector 10% more in Q4. Demand exactly for what? For chatbots, um, for chips? I mean, what is the real catalyst here? I mean, I, if I look from a chip demand, 15 to 1 demand to supply. So if you see how it's all playing out, enterprises are lining up in terms of the AI revolution. Now, now we're just going to start to see the software, the use cases. That's where Messi of AI, Palantir, front and center. You look at names like Oracle, what I believe Salesforce.com, ServiceNow. So now that tidal wave of spend, a trillion dollars of AI capex is coming to the shores of tech but in the, to me in the next two or three years. By the way, I interviewed Alex Carp a few weeks ago. We talked about you. We talked about you and some of your notes. He, he's a fan. He's a fan. But, but Joe, I mean, look, Joe has had the right view. He's been very bullish on the AI winners. And he hasn't been very bullish on the you know broader semiconductor complex, right? And this this is a perfect microcosm of what we we're just talking about. Even within semiconductors, okay, you have the big winners, which everybody knows, and then you have a bunch of companies that really just aren't seeing any acceleration in their business because the global economy is kind of eh. And and that's what we got. And and so in the case of Nvidia, I mean, Joe's had a great call. Um, I, I mean, he's not looking seven years out because it's silly to try and predict that, but he is looking out probably several years. We talked about that last night, which is there's a lot of visibility yeah. for 25, and then 26 is when the visibility starts right. to come down. So that the stock yeah. will start to discount that at some point. Um, but right now, you know, the momentum is quite... Uh, Gina, another thing that was talked about on the conference call and something that you've really been doubling down is just with your work with NVIDIA, extending that partnership, what exactly that looks like for ServiceNow going forward. I'm, I'm curious, how critical is that partnership with NVIDIA to your business? Well, it's a remarkable partnership, and we've been close with NVIDIA and talking about continuing to evolve that partnership for quite a while now. The new partnership we talked about is co-developing native AI agents on the ServiceNow platform using NVIDIA NIM agents blueprint. And that's all about turning key, uh, turnkey out-of-the-box AI agents for our customers. And we're beginning with security vulnerability as the first use case. And so really excited that our partnership with NVIDIA just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Well, one of the other fundamentals of our economy right now feels like NVIDIA. Uh, Torsten's log out with a chart this morning talking about how NVIDIA has a bigger market cap than five of the seven G7 countries. Uh, retirement accounts, index funds, all over indexed to this one tech name. Can we continue to be a bull market that's relying so heavily on NVIDIA? Well, you know, if you look overall, I mean, you still have over 70% of stocks in the S&P in long-term uptrends. So NVIDIA um, has been a big part of the market this year, but we also have to realize uh, up until this recent breakout, which is only a marginal breakout, it's really moved sideways since July. And what you saw is you saw other areas of the market, you know, do fine. And the, and the market moved to an all-time high, even though NVIDIA was trading sideways. But I do think it is a bellwether for semiconductors and, and technology. Technology is about 30% of the overall S&P. So it is important that tech participates. We still like tech. Tech, um, we upgraded our view of tech on the on the pullback in August. And I still think, you know, this the theme of this bull market is still AI. If you believe the bull market is intact, which we do, I think you have to still believe that there's still further to go on the AI side. So it, it likely has to participate. But again, look at the financials, making an all-time high as well. And up until today, industrials were doing better. Utilities, even though these rates are moving higher, another area where overweight also doing relatively including the bulk of NVIDIA's cutting-edge GPUs. He also suggested foreign companies should not be able to enter the U.S., borrow money, and build chips here. He's, of course, referring to Taiwan Semiconductor that produces about 90% of the world's cutting-edge chips. It's on tap to receive over $6 billion from the U.S. Commerce Department to build and continue to build its Arizona fab. Mizuho writing that last week a Trump win would be bad for Taiwan Semiconductor, while strategists at Citi are debating just how much tariffs will increase 
increased costs across the entire chip supply chain. It's probably more the latter than the first. There's this mean reversion trade that, you know, I think it's a probability with this name. Look, I think fundamentals are well intact with uh, Meta. Is it actually the best performing of the Mag 7? I, I guess it, it probably is. I, I don't know. Uh, probably not with NVIDIA, but um, I, don't, I don't cover some of the other names. NVIDIA is like pretty consistent. Other than that, though, I mean, you're right. Like, there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered, like this week with all of the commentary from uh, Apple on a negative side, the downgrade today, the earlier commentary that kind of competed with some of the positive China sales reports. There's a lot of tension, I think, in Apple still. And in a recent interview, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said he envisions a future where 100 million AI agents would be deployed within the company. Now, the competition between Microsoft and Salesforce is being watched close, closely watched, especially because of the sheer scale of enterprise data both companies have. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella saying earlier this week that AI agents will be as ubiquitous as apps in the future. Salesforce has already launched their agents through a platform known as Agent Force, the digital assistant. And that's the idea of this installed base that they have, whether it's through gaming or supercomputing, the likes of which we always talk about relative to Apple, but not so much as it relates to NVIDIA. The implication being that it doesn't even matter really about some of the competitors who are out there because the, the customers of NVIDIA are just going to keep coming back only for updated chips that, that they produce throughout the years. Yeah, so this this gets into the concept of, of what's known as the ecosystem. So it's an issue, like a lot of their competitors, like the pitch is, you know, we have a chip that's better than NVIDIA, which by the way is always open for debate. But even if it were true, it, it's probably not enough. It's not just about the chip, it's the chip and it's the software and it's the hardware and it's the systems engineering and everything that goes around it that makes it very, very easy to just buy their NVIDIA stuff and, and adopt it and install it. And it's up. you can be up and running in days without having to monkey around with anything else. Many of their other competitive stuff, you, you can buy it and you try to install it, and, and it may be months before you're up and running with it. We, we've even seen evidence of this. You know, AMD now, they've, they've recently, they've, they've, they've just bought um, a ZT Systems. That was to gain the systems expertise that NVIDIA themselves have sort of built up organically. And he's been doing, they've been, they bought other acquisitions and other things. They're trying to assemble some of those capabilities that's on the software side and everything else that they have been less successful building up and in, internally because they just don't have the scale. But it is clearly, it, it's, it's clearly about the silicon, but it's much more than, than just the silicon. It is everything that goes around it that makes it easy to adopt. And then once you're adopted and once you're established, then you really do have that installed base, um, uh, a tailwind. Um, once your customers are using your parts, they're used to programming on your parts, it makes it much easier just to keep doing that. The, the super bullish investors would suggest then the implication is that they actually have a moat, that this is I not a simply a, you've, you've said that for, for sure. Yeah. But more broadly, this is not just a first mover advantage. It's actually something more powerful and durable. Yeah, I mean, it always starts with the first mover advantage, but you have to remember, like, let's just take a look at the software. It's, it's called CUDA, and, and CUDA is a variety of different things, by the way. But they, they started building CUDA over 15 years ago. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that's a massive first, first, first mover advantage, right? You've got lots of other players now that are just getting started now. And e even, if you, even if you've been trying to build out your software and ecosystem from a competing standpoint for, you know, two, three, four years— NVIDIA still have a, have, they have a, they have a decade head start on you in that case. And again, once ecosystems get established, they're really, really difficult to crack. Even, even like what, one of the other well-known ones is what they call the Wintel ecosystem. This is, you know, um, x86 and, and Windows in PCs. And it's just sort of barely starting to crack now, but it, it's, it's been around for decades. Once these things get established, they become very, very powerful.